Welcome back. And I know from the survey that we did at the start of the course that a majority of you don't really care for math that much. So in this presentation, I'm going to try to convince you of something that probably all of your math teachers have tried to convince you of. And that is that math is fun and interesting and entirely worth the effort that it takes. We're going to keep the math simple in this course, but you do have to make that modest amount of effort. I hope you enjoy this. Hello, I'm Kendall House, and this presentation is called What is a Mathematical Model and Why Should We Bother with Them? I hope you enjoy it. A mathematical model, as we're going to define it, is any mathematical expression that allows us to think about ideas or evidence in a manner that interests us. It doesn't have to be a complex model, and it doesn't have to involve anything more than arithmetic. And here is probably the most famous mathematical model of the 20th century. This is Einstein's E equals MC squared. And even if we know nothing about physics, if we just look at this a minute, it tells us there's an unimaginable amount of energy in a grain of sand if we could extract it, because it tells us that the energy that's potentially there is equal to that mass in kilograms multiplied against the speed of light measures in meters per second squared. And that's an enormously large number. Now, we're not going to be dealing with problems in physics, but rather in biology. And the point I want to make to you here is that even very simple math can have surprising results. So let's focus on your direct ancestors. So this is a photo showing five generations of Armenian ancestors, uh, from the baby to the mother to the grandmother to the great-grandmother to the great-great-grandmother. And you're very lucky if you have five generations of your family alive. And over here, we have four generations of a Punjabi Pakistani family. And again, you're very lucky to have four generations alive. But your direct ancestors then are just your parents and their parents and their parents. So let's just extend our reasoning mathematically. If each of your parents has two parents, and each of their parents has two parents, then your direct ancestor should double with each ascending generation. So each generation we go into the past, there should be twice as many people who directly contributed uh, DNA to you. And if we do that, uh, we find something kind of remarkable. So this little chart shows that the first generation back, you have the two parents, the second generation back, the four grandparents, the third generation back, eight great-grandparents, uh, the fourth generation back, 16 great-greats. That 16 then turns into 32, and 32 turns into 64, 64 turns into 128, 128 times 2 is 256, you double that, you get 512, and you double that and you get 1,024 direct ancestors in just 10 generations. And that's 250 years ago. And this is probably what you'll recognize, most of you, as an exponential growth curve. So we should expect something really quite remarkable to start happening as we continue to go back. And it does. So let's double those ancestors five more times. You can do this on your calculator. And you'll see that in 15 generations, the count is 32,768 direct ancestors. And then if you double that five more times on your calculator, you're going to find that the count is 1,048,576 direct ancestors in just 20 generations. If we allow 25 years per generation, that's 500 years ago. That's not that long ago. So let's double it five more times. Well, 25 generations back, we're going to be above 33 million direct ancestors. And ready for something really interesting? Hit your calculator five more times, and you're going to find that 30 generations back, 
you're going to have over a billion direct ancestors. 1,073,741,824. That's 750 years ago. And this tells us something. One thing, it tells us that we're wrong in our thinking. Right? Because 750 years ago, the population of the world was perhaps 700 million people. And we've just calculated more direct ancestors for you uh, than the entire Earth's population. Uh, that's a puzzle to solve. And tells us that our calculation is impossible, but it's also terribly interesting. Now let's work in the other direction, and the math is equally simple. But instead of multiplying by 2, we divide by 2. We take a number and we split it in half, and that means we get fractions. And those fractions are just the reciprocal of the numbers we were working with. So the premise here is that half of the nuclear DNA in your child comes from you and half from your spouse. So whether you're the father or the mother, if you have a child, half comes from the father and half from the mother. Uh, this is the DNA in the nucleus of every cell in your body. So let's think about that the same way we thought about ancestors and see what happens when we do the math. Well, we get a pattern not of exponential growth, but of what's called exponential decay. And relatedness, it turns out, declines exponentially. And so again, at that first union, we're down to one half. We multiply by half or 0.5. But the next generation down, we're down to a quarter. Those are your grandchildren. So if your children have half of their DNA from you, your grandchildren, it's down to a quarter. We go to your great-grandchildren, it's down to an eighth, and your great-greats, it's down to a sixteenth. And then we just keep working that, and I'm running out of space here, but we go back ten generations, and it's one one-thousand-twenty-fourth of your DNA is in your descendant ten generations from now. That's not that much, but it gets more interesting. Let's divide it in half five more times. Now the fraction is much smaller. It's 1 32,768th. There's 32,767 other individuals who contributed some DNA to that descendant alongside you. Well, let's divide it in half five more times. And now we're to 1 1 millionth. Uh, smaller than 1 1 millionth, that's 20 generations ago. That's just 500 years from now. So you have a child, and that child has a child, and they have a child, and they have a child. Uh, you go 20 generations down, and of all the DNA in that descendant 20 generations from now, less than one one millionth of it is your DNA. Well, let's divide it in half five more times. And now what do we get? We get one thirty-three millionth. We divide it in half five more times. And this is in just 30 generations. Again, that's 750 years from now. Now think about this, right? You go follow your descendants out 30 generations, and we're figuring that at each time that there's a reproduction, your share of the DNA that's going to be in the nucleus there is going to be halved. You have that 30 times, and this is really interesting, because the human genome has about 3 billion nucleotides. Remember those nucleotides are those little adenine and thymine and guanine and cytosine, those little letters that we, we represent them as alphabetic letters. Well, think about this. Out of those 3 billion, just 3 will be from you. Just 3 letters. That kind of puts a damper on this whole idea of reproductive success. That's just 750 years from now. So think about that for a while. Um, that's pretty interesting, right? So even quite simple math can surprise us with its results and make us think about what it is, how we're defining things. Math also allows us to think about things we simply cannot think about without it. Chances are you've never calculated up uh, your ancestors or your descendants in that manner. Um, but quite simple math, uh, we can think about uh, things that are one one billionth. And math also allows us to replicate our reasoning exactly. And this is really important in science where we try to replicate 
It's very hard to replicate verbal reasoning, but it's very easy with a little work to replicate mathematical reasoning, and we're going to add one fourth reason to bother. If we express our theories using math, then we can use all of the mathematical rules and resources that mathematicians have developed uh, to work on our theories. And that's a tremendous resource uh, that allows us to think more clearly and more powerfully. So thank you for listening and get ready for a mathematical model called Hamilton's Rule.